Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to the Boundless Podcast. We have another awesome cosplayer with us today who goes by the name of Never Ending Dreams. How's it going? It's going pretty good, man. How's it going with you? Not too bad. You know, I'm glad that you finally made it out to the show and we got some good information that we're going to be able to share with everyone today. <laughs> so what is your um, Instagram name? So, you know, everyone can actually look you up and see that you know what you're talking about. So my, my Instagram name is uh, My Never Ending Dreams. It's spelled the word my underscore never ending as one word underscore and then dreams with a z okay cool so yeah he does some awesome lucio cosplays you guys have got to check it out um also oh yeah he's on facebook what's your facebook name also the same thing it's going to be uh my never ending dreams at perfect facebook.com. got it yes definitely check him out um you probably have actually already seen some of his work he has lots of lucio builds he's been on lots of just covers on instagram i see him pop up all the time anytime you type in lucio you will find this guy. He does some amazing work. Um, what was your most recent con? My most recent con was Momo Con. Nice. And who did you cosplay as there? I know it was Lucio, but which skin? It was the Snow Fox Lucio with the DJ set emote, along with Nightmare from Soul Calibur 6. Very nice. So what made you also want to do the Nightmare in addition to the Lucio? Well, I, I'd say for like the last three or four years, I've been kind of interested in making Nightmare uh, Sword the Soul Edge, and I wanted to make the eye move in it. Mm-hmm. But I wasn't sure if I I ever had to the skill to actually make that come to fruition mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, once i felt confident after making a hades cosplay from saint seiya i kind of felt like i could build anything mm-hmm. so that's when i took mm-hmm. on the challenge of nightmare from soul Calibur. okay cool and do you actually play the game yes i do very nice and do you main nightmare yes i do <laughs> nice <laughs> so it all goes hand in hand <laughs> and so anyone who hasn't actually seen his nightmare costume he has a huge soul edge sword with a movable eyeball in it you know just like the actual game so could you tell us a bit about how you did that so what i did to make the eyeball move is i took like this the system from inside of a, a doorbell um and i used a car a car push to start button and wired it together so that when so when you press the push to start button it causes the eye to open mm-hmm. there's an led inside that i cut from a different set of leds and wired inside mm-hmm. so the, the eye lights up as soon as it opens and it moves around because it does the animations of a doorbell and it Very causes nice. the eye to move around left right up and down and then it cuts off and the eye blinks in. So how did you figure that out? I mean, did you just say, hey, I just, you know, did you have a tutorial somewhere? Or did you just figure it out on your own? No, it wasn't a tutorial. A lot of it's trial and error. Mm-hmm. So like over the years, you've just accumulated knowledge that could allow you to do something like that. Yeah, I mean, same with like wiring speaker systems and things like that. They kind of come with trial and error. I did have a, uh, a friend who was like my sister's uh, fiance uh-huh. that was teaching me some type of wiring when it came to sound systems a few years back, but you just kind of build off of that. Got it. Okay. That's real cool because I actually saw it and I was like, yeah, I have no idea how he did that, but it looked really cool. So um, what do you usually make your armors out of? Um, I usually use EVA foam. I've tried Warbla, Dibra, and things like that, but I usually use EVA foam. Okay. So why do you use EVA foam? Uh, EVA foam is, is, is really inexpensive um, and it's easy to work with. Mm-hmm. And so like, where do you get your EVA foam? Because I know it's not too expensive but it's not too cheap either. Okay, so like before, before I got sponsored, I would get my EVA foam when uh, Walmart used to, sh- to sell the workout mat. Mm-hmm. I used to use that for a while. And then I used to get like craft foam layers from Hobby Lobby. Um, Then I started going to TNT Cosplay sal- Supplies. And then recently, as of like the last six months, I got sponsored and now Red Moon Cosplay Supplies or Solutions, uh, they send me everything. Oh, very nice. So congratulations on getting the sponsored i appreciate it yeah so for all the you know newcomers to the game or even some of the people who are looking to up their game so that they can get sponsored what would you you know recommend for them i mean you just gotta really stay hard at it like you can't really give up there's gonna be a lot of people that put you down um a lot of people that's kind of gonna doubt you but the way i got sponsored and i got the way i got my name out there was i just started doing things that i never seen anyone else do mm-hmm. uh, i wanted to stand out i, I never wanted to kind of go with the crowd i wanted to create my 
my own wave. So it's kind of why when you see my artwork, you can tell who it is because I just have like a specific style about how I go about things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so uh, before we touch back on, you know, you making your own unique style and kind of getting your own, you know, brand and style out there, you touched on a little bit of like people just putting you down and people saying, you know, naysayers. Could you give us more insight into that? I mean, like there's always going to be people that are going to hate you for you. And that's going to be in any field that you go in in life, anything you want to accomplish, whether it's your dreams or ambitions, there's always going to be someone or somebody that's always going to try to put you down, whether they just hate on your success or they envious of it, you know, or maybe they just don't understand where you're coming from, where they think you're weird. They're always going to put you down. That's something that is, is going to happen in every field that you've been in and cosplay is no exception. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Can you like tell everyone a specific example of when that happened to you? I mean, it actually wasn't that long ago when I was at a Comic-Con in South Carolina. I had did like my Hades cosplay and I was competing with it. And when I got on stage, there was like a group of people that was like booing me because they, I mean, I can understand them wanting their friends to win, but they booed me when I got on stage before they even announced the winners. Um, and I, I don't know if it was like pent up aggression from he said, she said type stuff, or they just really didn't want me to succeed, but it didn't really matter because I ended up winning the grand prize anyway. So very nice. And yeah, I hate to hear that stuff like that happening. But I mean, as I was just telling with, um, oh my gosh, Quirkless Cosplay, you guys have to definitely check out that interview. We discussed the same thing where the cosplay world is brutal, man. It's a ruthless world. And I know it can be difficult already, just, you know, if you don't fit into the ideal cosplayer, like, you know, the cute, attractive cosplayer, but even more so if you are trying to do your own thing or if you're trying to do things that kind of break away from the norm. And also, you know, sometimes it's all rough based on a few just a POC cosplayer. Have you had any issues with that? Um, Not as bad as some of the, the things I've seen online with like the race stuff. I mean, I had one guy say something to me about one of my cosplays because, I don't know, I guess he I guess he just didn't like the way my Gaggio look because um, he has like a, a black steel skin. Mm -hmm. Like it's, I don't know if you've ever seen Fairy Tale, but I know mm -hmm. at one point the guy was like, well, it's black steel Gaggio, not black skin Gaggio. Stuff wow. like that. Um, wow. I was, yeah, that was a few years back and then um the other issues that i've kind of had it wasn't necessarily plc wise like remember the first time i did the lucio like i had been working out a lot then and one guy said it just looked like i was on drugs and steroids because the size of my arms were like significantly bigger than lucio looks in the game wow and it was just simply because i worked out a lot and it was kind of crazy because based on the concept art he was really diesel he was really bulky but based on the video game i don't know people just kind of find anything to complain about mm -hmm. and it's yeah. always been that way that's so true and i hate that that happens unfortunately in the cosplay world but that actually happens you know in every avenue of life no matter what you're going to do yeah, so yeah how were you able to overcome those things like you know a lot of people see these comments online you know especially if it's their first time and they're kind of new to the game and they just kind of shy away from cosplay after that as a result so how would you say you can just shrug those off and keep chugging along i think i just have more of like a, a warrior's mentality mm -hmm. so where like if if you down me or you just doubt anything that i do i'm probably going to show you that i can do it like if you put me down i'm, I'm going to show you how good i really am like I, i'll i'll try harder i'll do things that in your wildest dreams you never think was possible mm -hmm. just just to show you the type of person i am I, I use it as fuel to drive me um to 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 try bigger and harder things that's why each year you see me do like something ridiculous kind of like how that Hades cosplay had sick wings and they moved and they played music and they had LEDs and that's just what it is if, if someone doubts me or they put me down I'll, I'll be upset at first but I'll use that negative that negative feeling and turn it into energy mm -hmm. very nice so basically turning a weakness into a strength yeah perfect and so yeah I know a lot of people don't know and Lamont and I have known each other for a little while but um, I think the first time I actually met you was at um um uh, uh, Ichiban Khan when I saw your um your Fate Stay Night cosplay. Yeah, I was playing a lot. Yeah, yeah. So we'll come back to the Lucio cosplay. So what made you want to do that cosplay? Um, I had went to Otakon a year before and I was already a fan of Fate Stay Night, but then they had like this show for um Grand Order. Uh huh. Like, they were showing like, the first episode of Grand Order and they were showing it early. And I watched it and I kinda fell in love with how that went. And 
um I always wanted to cosplay from Fate Stay, but I wasn't really a fan of the the characters, like how they looked. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, at least not as far as me wanting to cosplay as, and I wanted something that would be challenging yet looked awesome and had been from Fate. So it took me a while to find a character um that I felt like would be challenging to build and would also look, you know, tight. And then I had a few friends that wanted to cosplay Fate that con. I, my friend Terry Hall, he was cosplaying Archer. Um, my brother was cosplaying Gilgamesh, and I was like, well, I need someone that looks cool and looks challenging. <laughs> I don't land to lie, and I was like, okay, well, let's go for it. And I just went for it. <laughs> really nice. Yeah, I love that cosplay. I remember when I first saw you, um, I was like, man, I gotta get a picture of this guy. And then, yeah, we just kind of started talking after that, and then, yeah, now here we are. <laughs> That's real cool. So, who, okay, wait, so I know you just did Lucio. What has made you want to do all the different skins of Lucio? Like, you know why? Haven't you just gotten tired? Like, you know what? I did Lucio. Now let's move on to somebody else. Okay, so initially my, my favorite character in um, Overwatch was Genji. Okay. Um, that's that's kind of where, like, where my, my, my fan for Overwatch kind of started from. Um, there, was a, there was a cosplay group, and we were all supposed to cosplay from Overwatch, and they had deemed me to cosplay as Genji before I had even played the game or seen the character. Mm-hmm. They had created a group. They put me as the name Genji, and I was like, okay, well, I don't know who he is. Um, I got the game, and then I played Genji for a while, and I liked him a lot. I thought he was cool. Um, I had never played any ranked or anything with him. And then earlier in the year, it was like 2017, um, I wanted to try ranked, and I started playing I started playing Lucio. And before this, I had never played any other hero in the game outside of Genji. But when I played Lucio, it was it was very clear that that was that was the character for me mm-hmm. um, I was just kind of like styling on people like I, he just the way I played he just fit me very very well and I started you know competing you know competitively with him and I was doing really really well mm-hmm. my teams my teams were just winning repeatedly it was it was crazy so I really liked the flow of how he played he really felt fit my play style and then his backstory you know like he kind of comes from nothing and he uses art and creativity to inspire people around the world mm-hmm. so you know he's like a DJ and like like his music heals people. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. if he's using his art to inspire people and I'm using my art to imp- inspire people, it was easier for me to relate to the character than anyone else. Very nice. <laughs> See, and I love that that you actually have a connection with your characters because I can't say this for everyone. I mean, as a cosplay photographer, I do see it a lot, though. People just tend to go for what's popular at the moment. They don't actually have a connection with the character and they don't feel any type of way towards them. They just say, hey, this character is popular right now and I'm going to cosplay as them. Not to, you know, knock that or anything, but it's just nice and refreshing to hear someone who actually has a connection to them. So that's real cool. And funny enough, um, I actually like you know i'm ash elizabeth from the series mm-hmm. yeah like i've wanted to cosplay like as a male version of that i don't know why i got this like whole cowboy thing <laughs> i just want to try yeah you didn't like mccree uh, not so much <laughs> <laughs> not so, like mccree i don't know his, his look just isn't doing it for me that's fair yeah i don't know what it is but for some reason like she's got more of a western look and he's got more of like a i don't know what it is just, <laughs> just not doing it for me yeah <laughs> so yeah and I actually, I always wanted to do, too, a, um, oh, my gosh, I'm going to show my age with this movie, but a uh, Wild Wild West, you know, with Will Smith. Uh-huh. Oh, I've always wanted to do a Jim West cosplay so badly. I mean, you should try it. I, I mean, you know. <laughs> you think yeah. people would recognize who you are? I feel like they would. Probably not. They'd be like, oh, that's a cowboy. <laughs> like, oh, be- no. <laughs> Oh no! Yeah, they'd be like, "Cool cowboy," and I'd be like, "No." <laughs> and when that one person is like, "Oh man, are you Jim?" You're gonna be happy. Exactly. I'm just gonna like follow that dude around from that point on, like a puppy. <laughs> so, <laughs> he knows who I am. Exactly. This guy knows me. We have a bond. <laughs> so on that note too, I want to guess switch gears. We'll come back to the actual cosplay building. But um, something I was talking about with a few other cosplayers is cosplay photography. So I unfortunately. I don't know how, but I haven't gotten to photograph you since um, the Lancelot cosplay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's been that long. But I know you were, you know, I was at Momocon, you were at Momocon, and you just had a lot of things going on, and same for me. So, you know, we'll, we'll go ahead and write that one off in the history books. <laughs> <laughs> but how important do you think it is to have a cosplay photographer when you're actually trying to grow your brand or your name? I think it's extremely important, especially in, in the route that you try to take for your success. Um, to give perfect examples like a lot of cosplayers I personally don't do this and there's nothing wrong with it but a lot of cosplayers
cosplayers, you know, they sell prints and, and mm-hmm. things like that. And the better the photo is, the more likely the print will even sell in the first place. Mm-hmm. So having a good photographer is always going to matter. And if you're trying to get really out there, um, the same thing with like magazines and things like that. When you submit your photos to a magazine, you would want the best photo you can, mm-hmm. you know, and, and hopefully they accept it. And they're like, yeah, I want to put this in. Like I've been in a few, fe- few magazines myself mm-hmm. and um, a lot of it goes to the photographer just for just having great photos. Um, the same thing goes with like, you know, you want to go viral or you want to be on the art of cosplay page. The photo quality matters and it always will. 100% true. I definitely think that's a huge aspect that a lot of um, cosplayers miss because, you know, they're like, oh, I have a camera or oh, I have a cell phone. I can just snap a picture and, you know, boom. It's like, nah, there's a little bit more to it than that. And, you know, you do always want that, I guess, added edge, everything you can to get you to stand out whenever you're posting your images online. So do you have a patron? I do. Um, I haven't posted on it nearly as much as I used to, but I only do it just for my fans to support me. Um, and then every once in a while, I, I give away like a free Keyblade to anyone that's just supporting me. Nice, nice. Okay. So I was just going to ask, with regards to Patreon and growing, how do you feel about that as a platform to get your name out there? Because I see Patreon is kind of, you know, it's like really taking off Patreon and coffee. Everyone is on them now. And, you know, maybe about two, three years ago, I'm guessing you say about that it wasn't really that big okay yeah. well i honestly i honestly didn't look at patreon as a way to get your name out there mm-hmm. i looked at it as a way to help sustain you as a cosplayer financially mm, okay i don't think patreon itself will help you get bigger mm-hmm. but the bigger you get the more chances you have of your patreon growth got it it's, it's there for financial it's, it's for your fans to be able to financially support got it got it that makes more sense okay so for all the new cosplayers you know who haven't established that um uh what's the word i'm looking for just basically fan base what could they offer on patreon to start getting that to grow um it really would depend on the type of cosplay you are um if you're very good with building an eva phone you could try like maybe to like make an item like a tutorial of how to make something Mm -hmm. um and then like use that as like an incentive for people to you know pledge to your patreon just so they can learn more and learn tactics that you have okay. um that that would be one way same thing like if you're like good at sewing um you would just you'd probably sew something something that a lot of people would learn would what would like to learn how to make and you would sew it and then you would do a tutorial explaining how you made it because you know it's going to be something popular that people want to learn how to make and then they will pledge so they can learn mm-hmm. that makes and that sense. would be how you establish a patreon base and that goes with anything like for any talent that you have you would want to offer your your pledges or your fans you know a way to learn that would be a good incentive Mm -hmm. that makes sense yeah i never really i guess thought about that because you know i'm I'm, gonna be honest you know some people might be mad at me for saying it but like as a male photographer i'm not male photographer as a male cosplayer it's really hard to get your name out there man it is yeah, like you have to be daggone near building actual working, you know, however tall, 40 foot Gundams to really make a scene out here. And so for the male cosplayers, because I think actually, let me see, you are the first male I have had on the podcast. Now I think about it. Yeah. So, oh, wow. Yeah, you are. Yep. So what advice do you have for the male cosplayers? Um, Is it just male in general or male PLC? Um, let's go with both. Okay. So for like male in general, um, the best way to go about it would just be to um this may be a little tough like <laughs> if it depends on your overall goal, goal is your goal to be popular or is your or is your goal just to gain recognition um like if you're trying to be popular then that is why you see you know people go the route of cosplaying what's hot at the time they kind of just stay with the trends and, and things like that like you know you'll see like when naruto was coming out you would obviously see like a lot of people that took that route anything that's hot at the time you kind of want to stay in that realm just because it keeps your relevance up yeah. and that's only if you're going for popularity it, like that's that's the if that's all you're going for is straight popularity then you just kind of just stay in that lane mm-hmm. and just ride any wave that that's hot at the time mm-hmm. um if you're going for like recognition um as in you want to be like notorious for something whether it's like skills or things like that you would want to focus on um complex designs mm-hmm. um a lot of times 
sometimes, you know, people say like a lot of cosplayers that, that build a lot of things, it's really hard. They don't get the recognition, you know. I mean, you can have someone that does something very simple and they'll end up with a lot more likes than you and it would it will kind of bring you down. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and, it's, and that's that's just things that's going to happen. That's just the nature of how things are. Um, a lot of people are going to like things that they recognize. That's, that's just what it is. But at the same time, the more that you, the, the more difficult things you do, the higher your the higher your talent increases. You see, like it's a it's more of a, a tortoise versus the hare, and that's something I had to learn. Like when it came to building, I would build elaborate stuff really early, right out the gate. I was building elaborate stuff, and it took a really long time to get recognition. But then once I started getting recognition, it kind of became more of a, a wildfire thing because then they were like, "Oh wow, did you see he made this?" Or I've never seen anyone make this, and they go back at the catalog, and you can see growth. And once and once people can see growth, it makes them easier for them to, to stand beside you and root for your success. Versus when it comes to popularity, people are going to like the photo because simply they think you did a, a good job on the cosplay or they just like the character. It's more of like a microwave tactic versus an oven cook. That makes That's a great analogy. That makes perfect sense. I love that. So on that note, what can male cosplayers do? I mean, I mean like, let's just be honest and let's just face it, you know, we don't have the boobs and we don't have the butts to get us into the hall of fame so what can you do aside from i mean i know you can of course increase your craft and increase your skill but is there anything else you could do to you know combat that so that you could get recognized too i mean outside of staying in the the popular trendy stuff Mm -hmm. i mean as a as a guy um if i'm I'm guessing this is like going towards if you don't fit the stereotypical sexy body image is that what you're asking sort of like a normal because i mean as a guy you could you could actually you know essentially do similar things as girls you could dress skimpy if you wanted to you could have a bunch of shirtless cosplays and you would gain traction that way too it would still be slower but you would still gain traction faster than your average guy if you took that route um but if you mean for like your your average everyday guy that doesn't fit the doesn't fit the stereotypical you know ideal body image of a model because that's what cosplaying is becoming now Mm -hmm. the best way to go is to just do stuff that other people can't um you, you have you have to stand out and that's what it's about like you have to be able to do something you have to be able to bring something to the table that others can't and that that's just it's just as simple as that and it's it it, you will have to work harder you will have to do things that other people won't but that's just that's just a part of how this is like life's not fair and neither is the cosplay world (laughs) jesus christ is it not fair it's not i mean it's just very simple i mean and and that's like that in a lot of things in life not everyone there's going to be people that reach the same goal that you have faster than you easier than you but it doesn't mean it's impossible for you to get there. i like that that's very encouraging so okay i definitely love that so all right now let's switch back i feel like i'm jumping all over the place because i have so many okay. questions i want to ask and so much information i want to share because i know you're like a vault of information but um what is something like how do i say a product that i can market myself because i know you've outside of being known for your cosplays you're also known for your keyblade so what can other you know photographers or cosplayers or i don't know armor makers whatever craft you do what are some ideas you think you could do to get your i don't know to do outside of your main craft i say if that makes sense because i know you're a cosplayer but then you also do the keyblades it's not you do the keyblades and then you also cosplay okay so you're asking for ways that you can build more of a brand type thing like yeah that's a better way of putting it okay so if you're trying to build a brand the first thing you have to do is is find out who you are as a person. Mm. Um, and the reason why I say that is because that, that means a lot and it goes a long way. If you're not the type of person who can see their logo on t-shirts and stuff like that and is ready to to really push that out, then don't do it. Don't do it because you see other people doing it. You have to do what is you. Like when it comes to Keyblades, my first real cosplay was from Kingdom Hearts. It was out of Kingdom Hearts. Mm-hmm. Um, the first Keyblade I made was for um, a girl I had a crush on. I ended up dating her like, years later uh-oh like, we're getting into the sensitive side of uh never ending dreams yeah like i ended up dating her like years later but i had made her a keyblade i didn't even know i had any type of talent at all when it came to making a keyblade but i made her one her favorite one was oath keeper and this this was years ago this is this is at least a decade old or close to a decade and um i was like i made it for her i didn't really think 
too much of it. Uh, she really loved it. And then other people started asking. I had a few friends that um asked me to make them. And I, I made them just, just to make them. They, I mean, they paid me like uh, at the time, maybe like $30. Now my Keyblade sell for much, much more. Mm-hmm. But at the time, you know, I was just kind of doing it. And it turned out that I, I had a real knack for it. But I still at the time was only really doing it just for friends. And I, um, I used to draw and paint every day. So when you come from drawing and painting every day and seeing that paint transfer into something real, it became me making my 2D art into something I could actually hold. So it, it started to really, really transfer, like all the skills and stuff and talents that I had growing up and through the classes I took. I took plenty of art classes when it came to painting, drawing and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Seeing all of that transfer into a physical body of work, it was easier for me to express myself in the form of a keyblade than it was to anything else. That makes sense. So, yeah, so because because it was a form of self-expression and people around the world started, you know, to loving loving it and it, it started causing like a, a huge fan base and people started to gravitate towards them, it was easy for me to market them because it was a form of self-expression. Mm-hmm. I love that. Like everything you're doing basically is from the heart and it's not because of fads, it's not because of fandom, it's just because you're just basically doing what you like to do anyway. It's like breathing and eating. Right. I love that. That's all so awesome. So, all right. I think we've covered a good little bit on that. Now we can talk a bit about the uh, POC community. All right. So, so first off, before we even dive into that, what do you think about the POC community in its current state? Um, in its current state, I mean, I can see that the the blackface is still really prevalent, or prevalent, and I, I completely agree with them on that. It just it just doesn't really make any sense for people to be changing their skin tone to match, you know, colors and stuff like that. I, I think I think that's just disgusting, like absolutely disgusting. Um, as the community as a whole, you have like a large chunk of us that um that seem like they want to work together mm-hmm. and for the greater good. And then you also have another group of us that's like more of into like a drama atmosphere. Mm-hmm. Um, I think what I would like to see is more people band together versus more people trying to, you know, tear each other down. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just like I can see like when let's say a black cosplayer does something good I would hope that you know people would hype hype said cosplayer promote them and I could see that that is kind of changing because I don't think I don't think it's as bad as it was I feel like as a community as a whole we're kind of getting out there and we're talking POCs just as simply as as in black not just any this is what I'm talking about specifically I'm specifically talking about the group of the black ones um as a whole I feel like we're getting better but I mean like I said there's a lot of issues with like drama that I see that kind of just surface up um i don't really like the the cancel culture mm-hmm. i think that's a little weird um and the reason why i feel that way is because i feel like it's it's like someone can get canceled for something years ago mm-hmm. but then it's like you can't acknowledge the fact that the person could possibly change or grow and that's a little weird to me because it's like if someone did something years ago that doesn't necessarily mean they're the same person now because mm-hmm. people can change and people can can mature and things like that now there's, there's some instances where i like wholeheartedly get it like if somebody was really just tripping yeah like, <laughs> but like you know but i'm but you know that's kind of like like a, a outsider to the equation but oh um, a lot of times i kind of just feel like if we spent more time building each other up versus tearing each other down as a community we would probably do a lot better because i mean it, it is a really hard fight for us like it's a really really hard fight like you have you know we automatically start off at a disadvantage that's that's right out the gate um you start off at a disadvantage because most in most cases um the skin tone doesn't match mm-hmm. the character that we're cosplaying. So right out the gate, you know, we're already at a disadvantage. We already got to try harder to to even get any recognition to begin with. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's even more so with with guys than it is with girls, but both are still bad. Both start off at a bad disadvantage. But as a guy, it's even mer- even worse. It's like a mm-hmm. super negative. Mm-hmm. So, um, and I think that's why there isn't too many um, black PLC guys that's like really up there mm-hmm. in, the terms of, in terms of fan base. I, I really think that's why i mean as the fan base goes as a whole like as the cosmic community goes as a whole i mean it's not a lot of black poc women that's up there but there's there sure are significantly more black poc women up there right about that oh yeah Uh, but both still are you know still hard for both and it's always going to be that way because we just simply start off as a disband so So. i definitely agree i would really like to see we oh us lifting one another up you know instead of tearing each other down instead of the whole fat shaming thing you know I've discussed this a lot more with a lot of other cosplayers too in the podcast. 
person. I just wish that, you know, it could be just come a better environment, a better scene. And I think once the cosplay scene does evolve into that, that's when we'll start to start seeing a lot of other things that have kind of been shunned blossom. You know, at the conventions, maybe you'll start seeing less, um, I don't know, Naruto's or less Deku's or less Ichigo's, whatever <clears throat> have you. And I, I would really, really like to see that. And so, yeah, right. oh, go ahead. And for an example, like the touch bases and what I said, more of like the tearing each other down than building each other up. Uh, I see a lot more of like a canceling post go significantly more viral than an amazing cosplay done by a PLC. Mm-hmm. Like I'm, I'm more likely to see someone getting torn down and witch hunted than than I am to see something you know significantly amazing go go viral. Mm-hmm. And it's not to say that the person who's getting torn down doesn't get you know doesn't deserve to be torn down. I mean because the situation may vary, but it just kind of it just doesn't look it doesn't look good when you see that more often than you know like an actual cosplay going going viral. Mm-hmm. It's you know unfortunately also the nature of humanity. We love to see all the negative stuff and not many people want to see the good stuff. You know, if we look at the news, it's like, oh, bombing today, terrorist threat today, someone's getting deported today, not so-and-so open new jobs or power restored to, you know, this part of the world. No one wants to read that, unfortunately. Very true. Very yeah, true. so definitely I hope the cosplay world, and specifically the POC world, can shift gears and go to more towards that, like you're saying, more towards a positive aspect. And another issue that I've actually been hearing has just become kind of, uh, I don't know, relevant or made aware to me is there's been like a lot of uh, misconduct, I guess, of, on photographers' part. Have you heard anything about that? Oh, yeah, I hear about that a lot, actually. Um, you know, it's crazy that I'm a cosplay photographer. I have not heard anything about it. Yeah, like the, the reps for photographers are, are kind of all over the place at this point because unfortunately, there's just a lot of creeps in, in the photography world. Mm-hmm. And a lot of them, like the touch bases on what I said before, of, as far as where how important it is to have a good photographer to have good photos and things like that because that is how you would succeed well there are photographers that allow that to go to their it goes to their head you see if if a photographer gets very very popular to the point where they feel like they can make or break your career Mm -hmm. they're going they're going to pressure well not all of them but this is just like you know referencing the creeps yeah What, what they're going to do is they're going to use that pressure to get you to do things that you normally would and and that that's why like and that's why creep stuff happens that's why you know some photographers feel like they can just hit on girls all the time even if the girl says no you know they can touch them and things like that because they feel like they have the power to do what they want because they will dictate your future so and that that's simply why why I feel like you know a lot of photographers are are getting bad reps because I mean not all of them are bad but you know it only takes one one bad you know one bad seed and a good a group of good seeds to make the entire bag suspicious. Yep, that's so true. So, I mean, it's like, you know, if if there's a bag of grapes and I tell you one grape in the bag is poisonous, now you have to question every grape in the bag. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. Oh, that's <laughs> hilarious. That's yeah, a great <laughs> reference. I love that. It's like the same way, you know, people will be eating at a restaurant for 25 years. One day they see a mouse and they're like, oh God, I can never eat here again. You don't right. think about you? That dude has got a whole, he's got a whole bloodline living there. <laughs> like, that dude is yeah. not a new thing. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. like you said, you just have to know who you're dealing with and hopefully just, you know, deal with um, recommended photographers or not even just in the photography world, just in general. When cosplaying within a group with other people or doing anything that's type of a collaboration, you know. Even, for example, me getting you on this podcast, if you were like, man, that dude, Balance Reception, is a weirdo. I'm not going on there to ruin my <laughs> name, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so... Yeah, it's just all about, you know, knowing who you're, I guess, um, working with. <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. But anyways, um, I see it's Okay, well, we're almost running out of time. Was there anything you wanted to comment on specifically before we got to the last few questions? Um, No, not really. Um, Outside of questions, I'd ask you about other cons that you're going to. But... Uh, just um, the next con, I'm pretty sure I'm going to Blurred Con, Dragon Con, and AWA. I think those are the last three cons maybe of this year I'm going to be hitting. Oh no, Supercon. I might hit Supercon because that's right down the street from. So. Rally? 
Yep, Raleigh. Mm -hmm. So anybody who's, yes, that's what I've heard. So anyone who's going to be there, definitely. And anyone listening to this podcast, hit me up. I will gladly take your pictures. I promise I'm not a creep, or at least I don't think I'm a creep. So (laughs) yeah, (laughs) perfect. Um, So I guess just for the last little bit here, who else do you look up to in the cosplay world? Mm, That's a very, very, very tough one. Um, (laughs) Because I don't, I don't want to like pronounce her name wrong. Um, (laughs) You know, I'll I'll look it up on Instagram for you. Give me the rough idea and then we can go from there. I think it's like Kamui, K-A-M-U-I. I I can't. Cosplay? Yeah. Yes, you're right. K-A-M-U-I cosplay. Yeah. Oh Um, my gosh. Yeah. Oh yeah, of course. I know. I've, you know what? It's so funny because when you said the name, I was like, God, that sounds familiar. Yeah, this chick is amazing. Yeah, yeah. So, I like her a lot. Um, it's just it's just really cool to see someone have that level of detail and creativity in their yeah, work. Yeah, yeah. Um, I love all the stuff she does with LEDs. As you know, I do a lot of things with LEDs, too. Mm-hmm. Um, it's also really cool to kind of, you know, when I do trial and error and things like that, and I learn things myself, and then I go and look at a video that she made be doing for a tutorial, and she takes the same route that I did, even mm-hmm. though I learned it, you know, on my own. And I, it kind of makes me feel like she she probably did too. She came to the same conclusion. Mm-hmm. So things like that make me happy. Um, I really like It's Raining Neon. Um, let me check that out. I don't know that. I know Kimoy, but I didn't know It's Raining Neon. Yeah, just for the people, it's spelled I-A-T-S-R-A-I-N-I-N-G-N-E-0-N, zero N, not O-N, zero N. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah, like, I remember, like, a long time ago, before I was, like, really anything, like, <laughs> like, I saw a lot of her artwork and like I think it was like a I think the first thing I saw that was like incredible to me was it was like something from Mass Effect and I wasn't even a Mass Effect like fan but like it just looked the armor looked so like ridiculously amazing <laughs> and I was like I want to get to that level like I, I want to get to that level um another person like I really that really inspired me was Roar and Clank and that was only recently I like Roar and Clank a lot um Roy, so, Roy and Clank Roar like as in like Lion Roar uh, R O A R. Yep. R O A R underscore A N D underscore C L A N K. Yes. Yeah, because like her stuff is insane. Like from the like the the evil version of, of Samus from Metroid, like Dark Samus, mm-hmm. to like the the alien, you know, the alien long yep. head thing. Yeah, with hey. the, I'm looking at it now with the yeah, um like, the net scars on it. Like it's it's incredible. Like it's it's absolutely incredible. And I just kinda like I love to see cosplayers push the envelope. That that's what I you know that's that's my favorite thing to see in the cosplay world is stuff that I just haven't seen or even if I did see it I love to see like someone attempt attempt something difficult because I love challenging cosplays myself so when I see someone that has something that's like super duper challenging like I automatically just love it just right right off top I'm like wow that that's amazing and challenging doesn't always have to be like armor builds or anything like that I mean you can have like a challenging cosplay that's all sewing I've seen that stuff before too Mm-hmm. where it looks super duper ridiculous and yep. it looks super like royal and majestic mm-hmm. like I've seen it before but just anything that is just extremely challenging is like things that inspire me I, and I, I think I've always been that way yeah I definitely agree I remember a long time ago um I don't know if any I mean I'm not sure other people have seen it but or I don't know if you have but um Trinity Blood yeah yeah um you know like the whole I don't know the the able like the whole get up they wear from the church oh yes oh man I saw a girl who made the uh, I forget what the female's name is, like the sister or whatever, but she made one of those with sewing. And I was like, Jesus Christ, like how? And it was, yeah, it was just utterly amazing. I still, I wish I could remember who that cosplayer was, but it was just utterly amazing. Hopefully I can see more of those in a few years. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I think that's all the time we have for today. Um, I like to thank Never Ending Dreams again for coming to talk with us. And if you never saw his first interview, um, you can look on the site. Um, it's on there too. Just type in cosplay interviews and it will pop up. So thanks again for taking the time to speak with us. All right, man. I really appreciate you having me on. No problem. No problem. And which convention again did you say you're headed to next? Just so everyone can hear it again. Otakon. Otakon. So definitely if you're going to Otakon, check him out. He will be bringing some awesome cosplays. You can talk to him in person. I promise he doesn't bite. Um, he's a nice guy. <laughs> so, you know, you can speak to him about anything that you're trying to work on or maybe just getting inspiration and encouragement so check them out well that's everything for today and i hope you guys have a great afternoon or morning or wherever you are until next time stay boundless see you later